the ischemia trial led by myself at NYU and my study co-chair, David Marin at Stanford, was the largest trial of its kind. It involved 320 sites around the world that randomized 5,179 patients. That's more than twice as large as any previous similar trial. So according to the American Heart Association, 9.4 million patients in the United States are walking around with chest pain, angina, due to insufficient blood flow to the heart muscle. About 565,000 new cases, new patients that have angina occur every year. So that's the subset of patients that we were selecting for the study. However, we were selecting for those with the most severe ischemia, insufficient blood flow, demonstrated on a stress test, which would be a small percent of that whole population. The ischemia trial was a randomized trial. There were two management strategies tested in the trial. One was called a conservative strategy, the other was called the invasive strategy. All patients in the trial, both groups, got optimal medical therapy, including statins and lifestyle changes, other medications to control blood pressure and to control the angina. The conservative strategy just had the optimal medical therapy. They only had invasive procedures if they failed medical therapy. The invasive strategy, in contrast, Soon after the stress test, they went to the cardiac catheterization laboratory. A small tube was passed. Dye was injected into the coronary arteries that give a road map for where the narrowings are. And if feasible, if they were suitable, they had a stent placed after a balloon opening, or they had surgery to bypass, go around the blockages. The main results of the ischemia trial were that we found no evidence of a lower risk with an invasive strategy compared to a conservative strategy for the primary endpoint, specifically the risk of cardiovascular death or heart attack or hospitalization for unstable angina, heart failure, or resuscitated cardiac arrest. It's also important now for patients to know if they have no symptoms, if their angina is completely well controlled and they're going for a routine stress test, or for someone who's never had symptoms but gets a stress test and it's abnormal, or is diagnosed with narrowing in the coronary by another test, they should know that there was no benefit to routinely doing an invasive strategy if they don't have symptoms. It's very likely that the study results will lead to less cardiac catheterizations, less stents and bypass surgery in patients that are stable whose symptoms can be well controlled with medicines. It's hard to estimate the exact number of procedures that would be reduced, but based on the best data we can find, it would probably be at least half a billion dollars a year or more that would be saved by not doing procedures based on the results of the study. The trial provides very important information, evidence, for patients and their physicians to do shared decision making. They now know the risk of these heart-related events, and they know what they could expect in terms of improvement in their chest pain, their angina symptoms. So together, they can decide what the best strategy is for them. Both strategies mean taking medications, but for patients who have angina, chest pain that bothers them, they have a choice. They can try more medications to see if their quality of life is as good as they want it to be, or they can go right to an invasive procedure knowing that they'll have a greater chance of having no angina a year, two years, three years later with that invasive strategy. These trial results build on prior similar studies and show the same thing. The important message from the trial is that patients and their physicians should discuss what the patient preferences are, which management strategy is best for that patient.